Hi everyone, Tarekith here, and today I want to talk about something a little bit different, and that's stage lighting, uh, specifically the Shave DJ Gig Bar Move Plus ILS. You can see behind me here this light bar, uh, as well as the Shave DJ uh, ILS Command, which is this tabletop unit here, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, the reason I'm kind of focusing on stage lighting right now is that recently I've been getting booked for a lot of gigs in my hometown, uh, and as I've gone to some of these venues to kind of check them out before my show, um, I've, also not, I've noticed that a lot of the bands and live acts don't really bring their own lights, um, and the few that did really stood out, um, it just added a presence to their stage show that um, you just didn't see from a lot of other local acts. Um, so I wanted to kind of take my own live act up a notch and kind of invest in a lighting rig that would be kind of simple to use. Um, the other thing I needed this lighting rig to do was be compact and easy to set up. Um, I'm setting up for all my shows myself most of the time. It's got to fit in my truck with all the rest of the speakers and all my live equipment. Uh, it also needs to grow with me too. Uh, right now I have kind of simple requirements for my lights. Um, I don't have a lot of time to get in DMX programming. Um, for those of you that don't know, DMX programming is basically MIDI for lighting rigs. Um, you can address individual fixtures and control them and do complex lighting shows. Um, but I also didn't want just steady lights that just weren't really doing much when it comes to providing like a, a you know, a light show. Um, <clears throat> so I was really interested in the Chauvet DJ ILS system and ILS stands for integrated lighting system. Uh, and basically it's their own wireless protocol that lets you connect multiple fixtures and different lights uh, wirelessly with no DMX cables. And um, there's built in programs uh, built into this bar here um, that all the lights will follow and sync to. Um, without having to get into like individual specific programming. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really focused on the Gig Bar Move Plus. Uh, it's compact, it's easy to carry, it's easy to set up. It's just one speaker stand. Uh, all the lights come attached, pre-attached to the bar. Um, you get two derbies, a laser, two pars, and two um, moving heads. So you get quite a lot of light options in, in one package. Um, they're actually very, very bright lights as well too. I've used this outside a couple times and been pretty impressed with how much space um, these lights will actually fill up, uh, especially if you get a haze machine. I'm using a uh, Hurricane 1DX hazer. Uh, it's basically like a smoke machine, but uses water-based liquid. So it doesn't smell and it's not bad for your equipment. It doesn't leave oily stuff. Um, having a little bit of haze in the air, as I've gotten here right now, really makes the lights pop, as I'll show you here in a second. Uh, the other reason I like the, uh, the gig bar was that, like I said, everything's kind of pre-built into it. Um, if you're just a mobile DJ who's playing kind of more upbeat music, I mean, you could literally just hook it up, plug it in, and uh, press the auto mode, and it'll just do its own thing. There's pre there's a pre uh, pre-made uh, light routines built into it where all the different lights move around, and I'll show you some of these in a second. Um, so you really don't have to do anything. I'll do everything on its own. Um, the downside to that is that it can get a little chaotic right out of the box. Um, I said there's an auto mode. It changes like these built-in programs. Um, there is a menu screen on the back of the light bar you can't see. It's exactly the same as the one here uh, on the ILS command. So you have a little bit of control from the unit itself. Um, but really, like if you just leave it in auto mode or sound mode, which is auto mode with like a sound sensitivity thing, there's a built-in microphone in the bar that can react to the bass in your music and it'll change the lights and do other like gobo tricks and things um, according to like what it picks up from the bass in your music. But like I said, it gets really, it gets really busy here. Let, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So this is like the default auto mode. We'll do sound mode here. So you can see there's a lot going on. There's strobes as well, I forgot to mention. Actually, the bar has four built-in strobe lights, which are useful, but pretty bright. Uh, and as you can hear from my music, um, perhaps you can hear, my music is kind of a little bit more mellow. Let's black this out real quick. So I don't really need to have everything going full tilt all the time. Um, and this is a, probably a good point, <laughs> a good place to point out one slight fault with the gig bar move is even when the lights are all off, there's a, a blackout button and a blackout switch I'll talk about. Um, when all the heads are moving, it's kind of noisy. Um, the moving heads and the laser in particular um, do make some noise. So that's one thing to be aware of if you're kind of considering an option like this. You know, if you're like a solo singer songwriter playing acoustic guitar, this might not work for you. It might be too loud for the kind of, you know, venues you're going to be playing. But for most DJs and live electronic music, it's not a big deal. Once the music starts, you can't hear any of this. But it's just one thing I wanted to point out as we're talking about it. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, when, before I even purchased this, like one of my main concerns, like I said, was just how chaotic it was, how spastic it is. Um, and I wanted ways to tone it down. And aside from going with the ILS version of the gig bar, because there are cheaper versions, 
Um, you know, I wanted it for the ILS settings, but also because the ILS uh, Move Plus comes with this um, better quality remote. It's an RF remote, so you get like a hundred feet range on it. Um, you can control all the lights individually. You can turn them on and off. You can, they also have a few specific functionality. You can change the speed of some of the lights, change the colors, that kind of thing. Uh, so my goal was to kind of use this to tone down the lighting show from its default mode and kind of control it live on stage. Um, and just every once in a while, I wanted to have the remote right here next to me as I'm performing. I could reach over and, and turn things on and off. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't quite work out as well as I'd hoped. Um, while the lighting remote works really good and I have good range out of it, um, it's not backlit, so it's really hard to see in the dark. Um, the writing on here is really small as well. Um, I just found that as I was, I could do everything I wanted to for the most part with this controller, but it did take a lot of my attention. It took a lot of thought cycles to kind of pay attention to what I was doing and, you know, check behind me to make sure the lights were doing what I expected them to do and that kind of thing. Um, so ultimately this didn't work out quite as well as I would have hoped. Uh, and, and this comes with the unit itself. Uh, it also comes with a four button push switch um, inside the case for the Chave Gig Bar Move Plus. Um, I found that even more useless, to be honest. Uh, it's only got four buttons on it. It's extremely cheap feeling, um, like it would break if you stepped on it too hard. It does connect wirelessly to the mics, and if it's got the controls that you think would work for your show, it's a good option. But for me, it just didn't give me enough flexibility in which lights I wanted to turn on, what colors I wanted, things like that. Uh, so I started looking at other options, how I could control these. Again, I was trying to stay away from DMX. I know there's some good DMX options out there, which I plan to get into in the future, but for right now, um, simple is the name of the game. Uh, and I saw that Chave DJ has another controller they just come out with. Uh, it's another RF controller. It's got backlit buttons. It's slightly bigger. Um, it's got the same range. And it's got like a color wheel for selecting the colors of the fixtures. Um, so that would have been a good step up, but unfortunately it still didn't really provide me the kind of hands-off control I wanted. Like I wanted some more, um, basically I wanted custom presets. I wanted to be able to program my own light settings and, and, and recall those instantly. Um, and I was kind of at a loss for a while. Uh, I couldn't find anything that would let me do that without going the DMX route. And then Xiaobei DJ released the ILS command here, which is a tabletop unit, which actually has exactly that functionality. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just one second here, because that was a real game changer for me as far as using this for like a live performance setup. Um, but as far as the gig bar itself goes, I've been really happy with it. Um, like I said, setup is great. It comes, everything comes pre-configured and pre-attached uh, in a like, styrofoam case with like a cloth covering. Uh, I feel like the case will do a good job protecting the lights for transport. Um, it feels like it's padded enough inside that, you know, you could, I wouldn't throw things around, but you could move it around, you know, without feeling like you have to be babying it too much. Um, altogether, it weighs 38 pounds as well, the lights in the case, which is pretty good. Also comes with a bag for the speaker stand as well. Um, the bag itself for the speaker stand, it's just thin fabric. It doesn't feel very robust whatsoever. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have tried to buy the gig bar move without the stand and just bought like an on-stage stand, which has a much better carry case. Uh, I mentioned that I felt like the bag or the uh, carry case for the gig bar um, would protect it. I think that's true um, from, you know, bangs and, and drops and things like that. However, the covering of the, the stock gig bar case is like a thin fabric as well. Um, and I can see that kind of tearing over time if I do a lot of travel with it. Um, the zippers aren't the most robust and things like that. So um, again, you know, it's not bad considering it comes free uh, with the unit or we're paying for it in some way or another, I'm sure. But um, if I was going to be traveling a lot and playing a lot of shows, I'd probably invest in the new hard case they came out with for the Gig Bar Plus. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, I also mentioned that the Gig Bar itself has a built-in microphone, which is nice. So if you don't have like a hard wired way of, you know, running sound output from a mixer um, to the Gig Bar um, for the sound activated mode where the lights pulse or change based on the beats in your music, um, that's built in with the microphone. In my experience, it works pretty well. It's fairly sensitive um, without being overly sensitive. Uh, let's see what else. The other thing I did like about the gig bar too is that while I don't want to use DMX right now, it is fully DMX compatible. So in the future, if I decide to go with like a DMX controller or do a more complicated light show, I can do that as well. I don't have to rely on just the ILS system, which is very nice. Um, I did have some issues with the manual for both the gig bar plus and the ILS command. Uh, the Xiaobi manuals are very, very bare bones. There's quite a bit more functionality, um, just isn't really covered in the manuals. Uh, thankfully, their tech support has been amazing. Um, I reached out a couple times on the website, submitted like an email tech support request and heard back within like an hour or two um, late at night, like on a Saturday, which was pretty amazing. So there was nothing majorly wrong with them. I needed tech support. I just had some clarifications I wanted uh, made on functionality that I didn't see covered inside the manual. 
Um, so that's something to be aware of as well. Like it'll take a little bit of playing around with to kind of fully understand all the functionality of the gig bar, especially if you're going into the menu settings on the back of the unit um, and setting things up that way. Uh, the other thing I really like about the gig bar is just having these lights behind me. Um, a few people have commented now, um, friends and other performers who've seen my shows with the lights, that it does frame me nicely as I'm playing. Um, so it does provide like what I wanted, some atmosphere for the audience. Um, the thing I didn't expect was it provided atmosphere for me too. As I'm performing and the lights are changing and things like that, it just affected the way I performed the sets, which was pretty cool. It felt like it created like a performance space, you know, outside of just playing at a brewery or a small venue, things like that. Like it, it felt more like a music venue having some lights on um, and it affected my performance in a good way, which was really cool. Uh, some of the bad sides of just the gig bar itself, I mentioned the motors are kind of loud. Um, that's one thing to be aware of if you have like quieter instrumentation in your live sets. Um, there's no power switch on the unit, which is kind of weird. Like once you plug it in, it just turns on um, and it'll start going automatically and it's automatic with all the lights going crazy, um, unless you have another option like the ILS command here, which again, we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, I mentioned that by default, it's very spastic. That's kind of the downside. If you want just more minimal lighting and more slower, more calm lighting, like it takes some workarounds to kind of get that to happen with this. Um, you can address individual lights uh, on, the, on the menu in the back uh, itself, but even then there's limited functionality. You can't control all the parameters for all the lights. Uh, for instance, like the laser has like something like 30 different patterns it can make. Um, and there's no way to address those with the foot switch with this or with the back of the unit. Um, it'll just cycle through them randomly in auto mode. Um, if you set up your own custom mode, um, you're kind of stuck with whatever the default one is when you turn it on. So that's about it as far as the gig bar, as far as negative things. Overall, it's been really good for me. It's simple to use, simple to set up. It looks really nice. The lights are extremely bright. Um, but it got back me, it gets me back to the same problem I had with that, you know, just with the default options with this remote and the foot switch, I couldn't really get the control I wanted without spending like a lot of time like fiddling with this remote. Uh, and that's where the ILS command comes in. So this is a brand new unit they came out with to control um, the gig bar move. And we'll just put some lights on here so we can have something going on at least in the background. Uh, basically they took all the menu system from the back of the unit. And these are their words, the, the menu system from the back of the gig bar itself and put it in the separate control unit. Um, it connects wirelessly. I had no problems with it connecting whatsoever. Um, the response time is great too. When I press buttons to change lights, it happens almost instantly. Um, this is with the unit, obviously really close to the gig bar. I've had it a couple times where I've had the lighting, uh, controller, like maybe 75 feet away. Uh, and while this still connect, okay. Sometimes there's been some pause. I've noticed like the gobos on the moving heads will sometimes take a while to change um, if, I, if the unit's kind of far away. If it's close like this, it happens instantly. It hasn't been a problem, but just one thing to be aware of if you have this kind of wireless control unit um, not located close to the actual gig bar itself. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's really easy to use. It's got a hardware, uh, sorry, a, yes, a hardware input on the device itself as well. So I can run a signal from my mixer into this for the bass settings. So it picks up the beats. It's more accurate than the microphone uh, built into the uh, gig bar itself. Uh, there's also a microphone built into the command as well if you don't want to have like a hard cable connection. So it's nice having that kind of flexibility. Um, so let's kind of cover like why I feel like this, this ILS command works better for me. Um, let's see, what else can we do? We'll just play with some lasers as long as we have this on. <coughs> okay. So briefly, the, the kind of functionality you get here, as you can see, it's a tabletop unit. Everything's backlit nicely. Um, it makes it much easier to glance to see like what my settings are while I'm performing. I can just kind of glance over and press a button. Um, they give you buttons to change all the light colors of all the fixtures at once instantly, which is nice. That's useful. There's a master dimmer fader, so you can control the brightness of the lights. Uh, it's got a master strobe, so you can strobe the lights and control the speed. Uh, one of the downsides of some of these fader controls is that like the range, the usable range of the fader itself is kind of small. Um, this strobe speed for one, if I turn, let's actually turn the strobes on. So that's like fully fast, but I've only moved it like an inch and already we're like pretty slow as far as strobes go. I don't know why you'd want strobes much slower. Um, so just something to be aware of. There's also a sensitivity mode for the, the uh, there's, like I said, there's two default modes on the gig bar. There's auto mode where things just change randomly according to whatever presets are in there. And there's also the same thing, but with sound detection. 
Again, I've talked about that a few times. It'll pick up the bass from your music and control the lights based on that. Uh, usefully on the uh, control here, if I play the music, the sound button here flashes in time with the music. So you can actually see like your signal level just on this light here. And then they give you sensitivity. You can see the lights are changing based on the beats. You can move this fader. Uh, again, this is one of those things, this fader here, the sensitivity fader, um, I, the usable range is like an inch or two at the top of the throw. If you do anything down here, it doesn't really change anything whatsoever. So I kind of wish there was a way to kind of calibrate the, the ranges of these. Uh, and then there's a button for auto mode, which like I mentioned a few times now, and you can change the speed of the lights, how quickly the fixtures change from one preset to the next. Uh, again, the same issue as the other two faders. Um, it seems like the usable range is like the upper half of the, the fader range. Um, lower half doesn't really do much for whatever reason. So. Just something to be aware of. Uh, in addition, uh, more functionality we get on the ILS command. Um, there's a follow spotlight you can use with these two um, rotary encoders here. So you can set a spotlight like at one point of the room and then use the encoders to track somebody like walking through the room. It's mostly for wedding DJs and things like that, but it's built in and, and you can like set the start point of the spotlight and the, the end point of the spotlight and like manually scroll through that as someone's walking through the room, which is useful, I guess, for wedding DJs. Um, we also get controls for blinder effects. So you can press a button to turn all the lights on full bright whenever you want. Um, it can be latched or momentary. Um, we also get a freeze button. So you can press it, let's see, we... Uh, you just got a freeze button, so if you've got everything going crazy, you can just press one button and, and pause it. Uh, and again, this can be momentary or latched. Uh, and then there's also the ever-important blackout button, which turns all the lights off. Um, one thing to be aware of, which you can probably he hear and see, is that while all the lights turn off, the motors don't actually stop. So the moving heads and the motor and the, and the laser are still going, even though they're not making any light, um, which again can be kind of loud um, if you're just sitting here. Um, you can turn off the fixtures even though the lights are off to stop that noise. Uh, the other thing we have on the ILS command here is we have individual controls for all the different kinds of heads. I'm sorry, for fixtures. So your moving heads, you can turn on or off. Get out of black light mode. That's these two right here. You can change the color of them. Change your movement type. They'll track each other, they'll go opposites. There's a bunch of different movements. Uh, you can change the speed and the gobo. A gobo is just like the pattern it makes. Um, there's like 10 different patterns these moving spots will make. <clears throat> uh, a couple things to note about the moving spots um, is that on the slow mode right now, I've got them going kind of slow for my music. Like they are a little jerky, like they don't move perfectly smooth. If you look on the wall um, in the venues, you can kind of see like the light patterns kind of jerk a little bit. Personally, it hasn't really been a big issue for me, especially if I'm in sound mode, which I'm in almost all the time anyway. Like once they're kind of moving into my music, like it's less noticeable, but just something to be aware of again. And the other thing I want to point out too with the, the ILS command is it, you can change the colors here and the LEDs on the buttons change to reflect that, which is nice. But the problem with both the, uh, this remote, the foot switch, the back of the unit and the ILS command is for things like color, they're all pre presented to you in a list. So there can be like 30 or 40 different colors you can cycle through but you've got to go through them, step through them individually one at a time. And if you accidentally say, oh, I want this blue, oops, I pressed the button one time too many. I can't just go back to blue again. I've got to cycle all the way through the colors again and try to find that blue. Um, and that was kind of one of the problems I had with this remote. Like there's no feedback at all. There's no visual feedback to see what the colors are unless I'm staring behind me at the lights, which I don't want to be doing. Um, so it's nice that, you know, we have that functionality here as far as like the LED um, on the buttons change color to reflect what the lights are. But um, unfortunately, it still has the same shortcoming that it can be kind of tedious to find specific lights and specific colors you're looking for. Speeds, anything, any of those kind of settings, gobos, the speeds, they're all in lists sequentially. You can only step through them one at a time. Um, what else? So we've got PARs, which are nice for kind of adding some atmosphere. Um, there's a built-in macro functionality on the PARs. So if you hold down this button for three seconds, um, there's four different colors you can pick. And these PARs will cycle through those colors. So let me, I've got it set to blue and green right now. So if I press the macro, it'll go to blue. If I have some music on, it'll cycle between blue and green. And you can do that with up to four colors. 
Uh, kind of one of the downsides of the macro functionality, I think it's really useful, but there's no like very slow fade. Like what you just saw was like the slowest fade you can get. So it's, there's no way to like very gradually fade from like blue to green. Like it happens within like a second or two and that's at the slowest setting. Um, most of the settings for those pars, that macro mode are quite quick. So it just jumps back and forth to color to color um, very fast. So again, it's fine for most like upbeat DJ stuff, but if you're doing like more ambient music or things like that, um, a little less useful. Uh, the other thing we have is a laser. Um, this is actually pretty cool. It's a very strong laser. Um, it's actually stronger than you can use in, the, uh, in Europe and the EU. Um, so there's actually a setting inside the gig bar to put it to EU standards, which I think cuts the wattage in half. But um, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can change the color of the lasers. There's different patterns. I think if I remember right, there's about 30 different patterns. And this is a really nice functionality to have the ILS command for because like I said, there's no way to change patterns from the remote or from the back of the unit or from the foot switch. Like it'll just cycle through the patterns randomly uh, in auto motor and sound mode. But with this controller, you can at least select the pattern you want, which is quite useful. Uh, in addition to the laser, we've also got the four strobes. So there's a few different patterns for the strobes as well. If I can get the music on again. Let's pick a different song. So you can do different chasing, things like that. Uh, and there's also, then you can use it with the blinder functionality, like I mentioned. You can turn them all on at once, like at the peak of your drop. Uh, so that's nice. I think in general, strobes for me are kind of bright and a little overpowering for the kind of music I do. Um, I do wish that there was a way to press the blinder button and have the strobes turn on. Like it only, the blinder button will only work with whatever lights are currently on. Um, it'd be useful if I could just press that and have all the lights kick on automatically, no matter what I'm doing. Um, but there's more to talk about on that. I'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, I should also mention that the, uh, the strobe effects, the patterns and things like that, um, you can only access from the ILS command or the back menu. Again, you can't really do it from the remote accurately. There's no way to see which um, pattern you're selecting for the strobes. Uh, and then the other, the last light we have is the Derby. Um, <coughs> those two up there, they're not the most exciting and most lighting, but when you get some haze going in the room, like they actually can look pretty cool and add atmosphere. Um, there's a few different color options, not, not a lot. Uh, one of the other nice things about the Gig Bar Move Plus is that um, it also has UV lights for the strobes and for the pars, and I believe the moving heads also have UV lights. Um, but again, there's no way to directly access that um, other than with the ILS command, it's got a specific UV setting. So <clears throat> I can press this button here and, and turn all the UV lights on. But like there's UV lights built into the strobe lights, but there's no way to access that whatsoever, either from the back of the unit or any of the remotes. Um, the only way to do that is just an auto mode. It'll automatically cycle through um, UV mode for the strobes, which is kind of strange. Um, that's actually a useful functionality to have UV lights on those, but there's no way to directly control it. <clears throat> and that's kind of like one of my, my, one of my remaining complaints about um, the whole ILS system. Like, yes, it's meant to be easier to set up than DMX, um, at the same time, there's just some really weird omissions on functionality they don't let you access, um, especially on something like the ILS command. Um, I think it's kind of interesting that like with this remote for the Gig Bar Move Plus, I can control the speed for the derbies, but there's no way to actually access that from the ILS command, which should have more functionality. It should be more powerful. So there's just a few instances like that where, you know, you can do one thing with the foot control that you can't do with anything else. So there's, there's one sitting on the rear menu of the unit that I can't access any other, any other way. So I hope they eventually kind of get some parity with that and they kind of make it so that this ILS command can control everything on the lights. Um, especially because the most important function of the ILS command and the main reason I wanted it was for this preset functionality. Um, you have, six buttons that you can assign your own custom light shows to. And I say light shows, I mean all the settings for the individual fixture types, all the movements, the speeds, the sound sensitivity. Um, you can set all that up and then save it to a preset, which is great. So for me, I can be playing, and that's kind of muted here. Let's do another one. So I can be playing and I can just, with one button, like instantly changed to my own custom presets. I don't usually like like yellows and oranges and stuff in my sets. Like my music just always reminds me of, like blues and greens as far as colors go. So I was able to set up my own custom colors and movements. I could slow things down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I could bring the laser in once in a while in some of them. 
Um, so again, these are just custom ones I made. You can change the gobos for the moving heads, what kind of patterns they project. I've got this red one that's like kind of full on. It looks really cool in a venue with the haze and stuff for like the peak moments of my songs. And then we slowly kind of transition back into like blues and greens. <clears throat> yeah, so that was one of the things I was most excited about when it came to the ILS command was actually having this preset functionality. And let's turn that off, make a little choir. Because then I could turn off all the lights but one and save it as a preset. I could just take some of that spasticness that the Gig Bar Plus has as, as default and kind of tone it down a bit for my own shows. And the other useful thing about the presets is in the menu of the ILS command is you can tell it like you want all those presets to play for three minutes or five minutes or 20 minutes and then transition to the next preset. So I've got six presets set up here and in my shows, I had them last four minutes. So after four minutes, it'll automatically go to the next preset and just keep cycling through. So in a way you can kind of create your own custom light shows that way, um, you know, with the limitations of the ILS system that I mentioned before and I think complete control of like movement of the heads and things like that. But you know, I can have six different presets and scenes as I like to call them and just have it transition throughout that over and over again through my set. So it gives my sets like a cohesiveness that I like and I can just focus on the lights I want to use too. I don't have to have the strobes on. I don't have to use the derbies that much if I don't want to. I can have just the laser, whatever I set up ahead of time. Um, so that's been a real game changer for me as far as like, I can focus on the music now. Um, it's really easy to see at a glance like what's happening as far as my lights go without having to stare behind me. Um, I can instantly trigger, I'll get out of blackout mode. I can trigger certain scenes if I want. Like if I know I'm going into a quiet part of a song, I can just kind of bring the lights down to something more mellow. And if I'm going back into a peak of a song, I can make it a little bit more full on. And again, it's all at a glance, nice backlit buttons. They're kind of rubberized, they're soft. The unit itself is plastic, but it feels pretty sturdy. So it's something you can kind of hit on without having to you know, baby too much as far as, you know, when you're playing live, you just want to reach over and change something really quick or kill the lights if that be whatever you're trying to do. Uh, so anyway, that's the setup I have for my live shows. I just kind of wanted to go over some of that stuff if people are thinking about, um, you know, investing in lights for their own, their own live shows. Like this is a good option. Um, I believe if I remember right that the uh, Gig Bar Plus Move, Gig Bar Move Plus ILS, kind of a mouthful. I think that's around $1,300, um, which isn't cheap, but considering the lights you get and they're actually good quality lights, I don't feel like that's that bad. Um, however, it did cost me another I believe it was like 250 for the ILS command to really get the functionality out of it that I really wanted. Um, as well as also investing like another $150 or so in a haze machine. Um, you don't need that, but it definitely makes a big difference. Um, unfortunately, in this big room, the haze dissipates kind of quick and the hazer is kind of loud, so I don't leave it running all the time. So <laughs> you can hear me talking. Um, so yeah, it's the ILS command. Um, that's a game changer for me. Um, it fits on my setup really good. It's easy to control. I can glance at things. Um, the connection is really easy. All the wireless connections have been simple. I've had no problems connecting the command to the ILS uh, gig bar itself. It, it paired instantly when I tried. Um, it's got the hardwired input for sound mode, which I like a lot. It's a little bit more reliable than the microphone mode, especially if I'm playing outside and it's kind of noisy. Um, I don't have to worry about that. It's always going to hear exactly what I want. Um, there is one more downside though about the ILS command I should have mentioned is I like the fact that I can make presets, but if I want to add to those presets or I decide I need to tweak the preset, maybe it's something I wish I would have set up differently. Um, that becomes a little more difficult. Let me show you what I mean. So let's see. So here's a preset I have again, let's turn those strobes off. Those shouldn't be on. There we go. So there's a preset I have. I like it, let's say halfway through a song, you know, I want to turn the moving heads on. Well, normally you would just press the button and turn the moving head on. Unfortunately, when you do that, it actually takes you out of your presets. It no, it's no longer using your preset. It goes back to whatever your default auto mode or sound mode you're using before you engage the preset. So let's show another example here. So let's say I've got this red version I like, this red preset I made. Um, but okay, maybe I want to turn the laser off, uh, halfway through the song. So I press the button and turn the laser off and it dumps me out of my preset, my red preset and goes back to the default sound mode, or in this case, auto mode, because that's what I was using last time. 
Um, so unfortunately, that's kind of annoying. I wish there was a way around that. I wish that like, you know, I could set up my presets and still have control over individual light fixtures. You know, maybe at one point of the song, I want to change the light from blue to red. Um, there's no way to do that. The second I change the color or turn a light fixture on and off, it just dumps me out of my preset. I'm no longer in my preset mode. Um, and the same thing goes for like when you're actually trying to program the presets, like say, let's see, we're back to this first preset again. <clears throat> so I've only got the pars on and the derbies on. Uh, and let's say, oh shoot, I really wanted the laser on too. Um, so I turn the laser on and I want to resave it my preset. Well, I can't because when I turn the laser on, it loses all the settings for the other lights. So <clears throat> it's not a huge deal, but that's definitely one thing that I wish that like Chave DJ would address. Um, it's still on the original firmware that it shipped with. Um, they haven't done any updates for it yet. So hopefully they see this and some of the feedback I sent them and they can kind of like, you know, make this ILS command a little more fully featured um, without having to scare people away who think that, you know, something like DMX programming is too complicated. Um, there's definitely some room to grow with this, I think, where you can add more flexibility, more functionality um, without making it more complicated. Um, otherwise, I'm really happy with everything. Um, it's been working great, easy to set up, no complaints. Tech support's been awesome. Um, it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world, but I think for the price, I get a lot of lights for your money. Uh, and already I've had comments from people about my shows just looking better and just standing out more. So it basically accomplished everything I wanted it to do. Uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's kind of like, let's give you some ideas if you're looking for lights for your own live setup uh, or for your own DJ gigs, things like that. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, otherwise, stay tuned for the next video soon. Thanks a lot.